I'm allergic to sound. It doesn't matter what it is. It, people chewing, babies crying or laughing. Neither is better. I wear earplugs during sex mainly to dampen the sounds of disappointment so you can imagine my horror when I heard a sound coming from my PC. I fixed it, but I did not know at the time that that would send me down seven different rabbit holes, all converging into a pool of my own blood. All I want is the perfect camera. All I want is the perfect camera. I borrowed Gerald Undone's shirt. I took it out of the laundry. It wasn't even clean yet. Canon C70, obviously. 50 mil, tiny 1.2, forget it. So, to catch you up, I heard a noise. It was like a grinding fan. Thought it was a CPU cooler. Replaced it. That wasn't the noise. It only added metal dings. The Arctic Freezer 36, burn in hell. Then I realized it's the power supply upgraded to 1000 watt. That made me realize I could now get a new video card. My computer was fine. It was okay, it struggled with the odd file, but I was like, okay, why not? One little upgrade, I've never upgraded anything, let's try it. So we got the AMD 7900 XTX instead of a Mac, you Mac freak sheep bitch. And it's been fantastic, I can't even stress it. It's so good, like too good for its own good. But now I ran into a problem that I didn't know I created. My old video card had a USB-C port. I could plug in my SD card reader. Zippy files. My new card does not have that. And now my old ass motherboard and computer case, neither capable of USB-C technology. I was like, okay, I'll just buy a PCI e-card. So I did that. That brings us to our first rabbit hole of PCIe bullshit with highway lanes being shared by grandparents. It's Listen to this one. So you, there's PCIe lanes. One super powerful one, one crippled ass one, and then two mini ones. They all seem to share the same highway. And so like if you use one and you plug in something else, now your main video card is half as good as it was. Don't quote me on that. What's the point of that? You're not like a power bar where like, oh, I plug in a fan, I plug in a bunch of stuff. It, the fan doesn't all of a sudden go at half the speed because my lamp is on. It just works. Get your shit together. So I realized because my new USB card was a PCI X4 instead of the X1 tiny ones, I had to plug it into the second slot. Not only was that blocking my GPU fan, it was taking away from my GPU potential. So I removed it, returned it, almost about to return it because of this thing's too long. And just side rant, your USB things stick out. They're annoying as hell. They're coming out, they stick out and then sticking things in, it's metal on metal crime. I don't need that in my life. I would like to hear from some of you nerds who haven't seen the light of day in the last 14 months. You probably think soda is a vitamin. I can assure you it's not. Is that true for all motherboards? They all share a PCI lane or is that some old ass technology that I'm dealing with? And like it's no longer a thing in new cards. And my tiny, I have the B450 Oris Elite and those tiny ones? It doesn't say whether those share things or not. So I don't know. I just ordered a new PCI card that's smaller. It'll fit in the top X1 port and it's slower. That other card was fantastic. The one I threw through the window, it was good, but like, I don't know what that did to my GPU, something bad. So now I have a slower one on the way. I tell you, my motherboard is utter trash. It has like USB, Gen 1 ports, like nothing is fast. It's a nightmare, but I can deal with this for another 10 years. I don't need the power. I'm not the guy that needs an upgrade every year. Oh, the latest thing was released. Okay, we're building a new PC every year. You're insane. This will be good enough, especially with the things I just bought. That brings us to our new purchase. There was a debate in the comment section. Just abandon your motherboard. Just build a whole new PC. I don't need that. I'm already right now 
capable of editing probably like nine 8K files side by side with crazy color grades. Like I do not need the performance, you're insane. I'm not looking to build an entire thing yet. I just want a couple upgrades to max out this motherboard, realize its full potential, and then in 10 years, I'll build a new PC, maybe five. We'll see what happens. Because I'm on AM4, we're sticking with that until AM7 is here. Not AM6. AM5 is bullshit. AM6 is not gonna be enough for me. AM7 then, okay. So what I did, I was debating 5900X or the 5950X or 5800X. That was on the table. I found a deal, finally. I saw the 5800X 194. I was like, that's pretty damn, damn good. But it's hot, it runs hot, and it's not that fast. 5900X, I found used on eBay for 320 Canadian. Not even like the best deal ever, but the 5950 would have been like 200 more than that. And I was like, I am not investing much into this old ass bitch. It's not gonna live forever. I just want a new CPU cooler because my fan is bullshit. And really, I could not bring myself to just buy a cooler and stick it on my old processor. I had to upgrade something. Because that's my new bottleneck. The GPU is so powerful, it can't even handle itself in that case. It's like, come on, guys. It's like a slave owner it's whipping all the other components. And it's like, we on board with this or what? It's like, no, none of us can do what you do. So the 5900X is on its way to my house. Plus, when it comes to the cooler debate, I was leaning Thermal Right, Peerless Assassin, or even the Phantom Spirit. But I heard some rumblings that eventually those have problems. Fan noise, it's not the same build quality as a Noctua. So we went with the super overkill Noctua D15 that won't even fit in my case, most likely. They warn against it. My exact case, Cooler Master H500. They're like, nope, that's probably not gonna work. Unless your RAM is tiny, which I don't know, but I believe it is because everything else on my body is tiny. So that might fit in the case and it will be silent somewhat. I tell you though, after replacing that loud grinding fan of my old power supply, that's now silent, but then the other things I'm noticing are loud and it's mainly the CPU fan, the stock cooler, that AMD thing. So it's like, hopefully we get some silence of a Mac mini. I should have bought a Mac mini. So hopefully all those things work. The new PCI card is fast enough. This new 5900X doesn't wreck my motherboard somehow. And the Noctua cooler fits and it's silent and it lasts forever. There we're good to go, but I've noticed some things. My SSD, can someone tell me, the guy who built my PC put it in the bottom slot and I was doing some research, that's the slower slot. Why did he do that? Is there a reason that I'm missing? It's an X2 slot instead of X4. My SSD is capable, it's an X4. Why isn't it in the top one? What did he do? And then I was reading through the manual of my motherboard and apparently if you put that top slot, it'll shut off some SATA cable or something. And I'm like, is that, is everything in my life plugged into one of those cables and it's gonna turn off the second I switch that slot? Oh man, I'm debating it. So like, I don't know if my hard drive's plugged into that. There was, I did plug in a SATA to my hard drive. So like, am I gonna have to reroute? Oh, I need number one cable instead of number three. Such an odd thing. Can't you all just work together? Your PCI slots hogging resources, your lanes being shared. Just get your own road, you piece of shit. But I didn't realize all these different rabbit holes that I was having to set myself off. Like the SSD, a lot of people just install their programs on one and then their files are on another one. I don't do any of that. They're, everything is on one. Windows, DaVinci, all my files, that's not good. But like, how does it work? 
will I see my files on the second SSD or do I have to enter it? Is that my desktop? Is the first one that has Windows always your desktop, but then you start DaVinci there, but then you have to drag some shit. I don't know how any of this works. There's so many different things that nobody should ever have to know with like RAM speed. One of you assholes said like, oh, is your, make sure your RAM's running at 3200. I'm like, how, what do you mean? And so like, I look in, it's not running at that. It's capable of 3200 megahertz, but it was at 2133. So I was like, okay, enable XMP. I'm like, okay, I did that. Now it's at 3200, but apparently my motherboard's only capable of like 2900. So it's overclocked about to ramp up to hell. I don't know what's happening. And apparently those numbers aren't even the same. It's like, oh, 3,200 is equivalent to 1,600. That's the real, what the, f what do you mean? What, what, oh God, I hate computers. Could have had a Mac, could have had a Mac, no headaches. But now my head hurts every day. So feel free to chime in on any of these individual areas that I'm clearly confused about. Is my RAM safe? at 3200 MTs in a 2900 motherboard. Did I go wrong there? Uh-oh. And should I upgrade that? I probably shouldn't, but I could see two 32 gigs uh, right in there. Will it fit in my fan? I doubt it. And the last rabbit hole is more irritating than a sandwich of cayenne pepper and mayonnaise shoved into your eyes. The reason I got this 7900 XTX was because two reasons. One, I think it was Tech Notice did a little thing. He was like, you know what? This is a fantastic card for DaVinci. It's actually better than the 4090 in a lot of ways. It's like, it's right up there. So I was like, okay, I thought AMD was shit for video editing, but apparently nobody knows anything and that's fine. Then Puget Systems, they did a little bench score and I was like, oh my God, 79, it's better. And it's like less than half the cost. I was like, okay, they they know what they're doing. DaVinci Resolve. Look at that, 4090, 4080, super, doesn't matter. So I got it. Now they see another thing. It's not even like ninth on the list. What are we doing? It's the same thing, isn't it? Overall score extended versus extended overall score. Sounds like the same ass thing with a, you moved one word, you put some in brackets. It's the same sentence, but apparently that changed everything. And now every card is better than my card. Even a 4070 TI super, probably find that for $12 in Radio Shack. Like what the hell happened? What do your charts mean? Which one is right? But honestly, all these little things like PCI 3 versus 5. Oh, we're at 5 now. My motherboard's only capable of 3. It's not using the 7900's full potential. It doesn't matter. Like, my files are editing just fine. So, like, relax on all these little nitpick specs. But, like, that is still annoying to see that. But I got a good deal on that card. It was, like, 1170 Canadian plus tax now. You buy that, it's 1722. I haven't seen it cheaper than that. Like that was a steal of the century. It was perfect, but even if I wanted to replace it, I can't. I have till January 31st to return that, but I would have to make a decision before that. I can't just take it out, send it back. Like I need something else in its place and nothing's looking good. So let me know what I did wrong and what you would do different, any BIOS hacks that you know of to optimize my computer right now. Like, oh my God, you had that turned on? What were you thinking? You XL should be 1.6, you moron. I hate all these little numbers that make no sense. Cameras are so simple. You learn the specs, it's like, oh yeah, 20 megapixels. That's way worse than eight. It's the opposite of what you would think. And you learn it and it's simple, but these, there's all these nerd paths that lead you to hell. So like go to hell and I'll see you there. Thank you for the Bitcoin donations. I have a purple shirt. Oh, how you doing? You subscribing for more of my now, Sandy?